on this episode. Waves. How many? And maybe there's gonna be 10 waves. I don't know if that's good or not. Just a bunch of waves. Christian makes a confession. I am not a musician. But then he makes music anyway with predictable results. Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy. This is a little tutorial, shmup tutorial. When we're making little shmup, episode 17 now, things are getting serious. At this point, again, our goal is to kind of like wrap things up because look, we have beautiful explosions. And we want to just bring those explosions home, right? We want to just like be like, okay, let's just like, okay, let's just turn this into a game, man. I just want to play this. I want to see those explosions over and over again. So last time we kind of did this, this to-do list to kind of like, like to, to set up some milestones that we want to hit, right? and to make us think about what we want to do. Now, I will say right away, I can, this is a bit of a scary part for me because I did, you know, I did pre-write parts of the, the game and kind of like laid out everything, but not all of the parts. I didn't finish the, the game. So I kind of don't really know where this is going. This is a bit of a scary situation for me, but that's okay. That just means that I'm kind of like in the same spot as you are. I'm, we just don't know where we're going, but we're just gonna trust ourselves that we're gonna be there to figure these things out and, you know, just like tackle one uh, problem after another. Now I do have some ideas. I, it's not like I didn't, don't know what to do now. Um, so in terms of game flow, I had like this the following idea. Um, I want to make the kind of like a wave based schmuck, right? So what I want to have is I want to the game to start and it's gonna be like level one or wave one, right? And then a bunch of enemies come come at me. I dispose of the enemies. And then if I survive the wave, you know, wave number two comes and then a bunch of enemies come in. And if I survive this wave number three comes and so forth. And maybe there's gonna be 10 waves. I don't know if that's good or not. Just a bunch of waves. And the last wave is gonna be the final boss. And if they've defeated the final boss, then there's gonna be like, hey, congratulations, here's your score. And that's it, right? Like this is gonna be the kind of like general game flow that we're talking about. Now, in order to pull this off, there's a bunch of things that we kind of still need. Uh, obviously, we're gonna need, need a bunch of different enemies that we're gonna spawn. We're gonna have a, a system of waves. We're gonna to have to figure out a way to design the waves to kind of figure out how the waves work. Hmm. But that's the nitty gritty detail. Something I want to set up first is kind of like the skeleton. And this is going to be something that we're going to deal uh, with today. So if you think about this, okay, so the game starts, we have to start screen already. But now if we have to start screen, the game immediately starts. And so what I want to have is a screen that shows me the wave number that this is now a wave coming wave number one right so i wanted to add that screen that shows me that that wave number let's do that all right good so <clears throat> in start game i want to maybe just like save the number of the wave that, that we're about to encounter uh let's let's just let's so let's just call it wave equals one let's see if it's good and then i want to create a new uh mode uh, let's call this else if mode. How are we gonna call this wave? Uh, wave intro. Vintro. Waftro. <laughs> wave. Wave text. Wave, wave text. Wave text. Let's call this this wave text. That's I think uh, quite often like the I just like trying to feel out different different things to to kind of like uh, the, because I want to pick names that for me sound natural and maybe different names gonna sound for you natural and then you just stick to those. I think wave text seems, seems kind of like natural to me. Okay, so update wave text and then here uh, when we draw we're also gonna go uh, draw wave text. 
Okay. Just created a new mode and uh, this new mode is attached. Uh, we'll run two different uh, functions, draw wave text and update wave text. So our next goal is to write those functions now. Uh, first draw wave text. I'm gonna uh, scroll down here. Draw wave text. And then I'm gonna create a new function and update function. That's gonna be in this tab here. Update wave text. Okay. Now, um, here's the weird thing about the wave text. Um, if I am in the wave text, I kind of already want to be able to see the game, the actual game. I want to be able to basically see the game and the text should be displayed uh, across the screen above the game. I'm, I want to be already be able to move this, the ship because something that will happen is uh, I will defeat all of the enemies and then I don't want the game to disappear. I want the game to continue, but then you know, it just text scrolls and it says, warning, warning, next wave approaching or something, right? So I kind of, the, the weird thing is that I kind of want to draw the game. Um, and so that's something we can actually totally do. We can just put the draw game, we can call the function draw game within the draw wave text. We can totally do that. We can just draw the game first when we should draw the text and then draw the text on top of the draw game. That's something you can do. Uh, I'm going to uh, copy this, my awesome shmup text and just, just going to drop it in here and wave text. I'm just going to like put a dummy text on top of the game and just like see what, what this looks like. Okay. Um, and then here, I when uh, I'm not going to start in a start mode, I'm going to start. Actually, I will start in a start mode. But here, an update function. Um, instead of going. No, here, here. Let's go to the. I'm sorry. I'm just like looking around a little bit. I just like. Oh, here in the start game. I don't want to go directly into the game. I want to go into wave text. Uh, so we start into the wave text and not into the game mode. So we're going to press any key. And now we're in a wave text mode. And now the game is frozen because it's not being updated, but we see the game and we see the wave text being rendered on top of the game. That's good. Now I want to tweak this. Uh, in update function, I actually also want to update the game. I want me to be able to shoot and everything. So let's just like put the update game function inside the update wave text. I just want to like the game to be running, right? So why not? Let's try that. There we go. So the game is running already. Enemies already spawning. That's not good. We're going to take care of that. But yeah, we see the wave text on being rendered on top of the game because we're just running the actual game update game function and draw game function in the draw and update functions of wave text. We're just putting in the text on top of that. Now let us tweak this a little bit. So here yeah, the actual wave text, I want to update this a little bit. So for example, here, just not, not to have the like, dynamic text, I want to have like wave and then I want to actually add the wave number, right? So here we have wave, that's the variable that sta stores the number of the wave that is about to begin. Uh, so let's take that. And then here we'll be printing the text onto the screen. We're going to go wave, uh, space, close quotation, and then dot, dot, wave, <laughs> the actual variable wave. So uh, dot, dot, we had that earlier. That is a way of combining two text variables into one bigger text. In this case, the second variable is not a text, but it will get converted into text automatically. It's basically just a way for us to print this entire statement wave and then a number in one go. And something I already noticed is it's a bit, the text is a little bit too far to the left. Uh, so I'm going to go 44, 40. Let's try that. Let's see how that looks. Wave one. I think I want to go, go even further to the right. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit 56. Let's see how that works. Yeah, that seems, that seems, that seems right. 
and then maybe I want the text to be actually blinking. So I'm gonna actually use the function that we created here, the blink function, and I'm gonna uh, drop this into the fourth argument here, and that is the color argument of the wave text. And yeah, there we have a beautiful blinking wave one text, perfect. Okay, so here's the thing uh, with a wave. I actually want um, the wave to be shown for, like the text to be shown for a couple of seconds and then I want it to disappear, right? This is going to, should be like this kind of countdown, right? So let us create a click countdown variable. Uh, maybe we're going to call this wave time and we're going to set it to 120, right? And then in the update function, uh, we're going to go wave time uh, minus equals one. So we're going to subtract one from wave time. And if wave time is smaller or equals zero, then, and in this case, we are going to go uh, mode equals game. We're just going to switch to game immediately. And let's see how that works. Okay. Uh, maybe to showcase how this works, uh, I'm going to actually print. I'm going to print wave time to the screen. You can see it's counting down. Maybe a bit too long. Maybe maybe 120 was a bit too long. Maybe 100 seconds is okay. Might be even still too long. Let's go 80, uh, 80 frames. Yeah, that's that seems that seems about right. 80 frames. We're gonna still tweak them around, but 80 frames seems seems okay for me. Um, okay, I'm gonna delete this this print here. Okay, so you can see now. Okay, we see the wave one thing, and then um, and then. Uh, the game continues. Now, I don't like the way um, the enemies spawn. So far, this was a bit of a placeholder, the way we spawn the enemies, and maybe I want to think about generally how we're going to deal with the enemies. Um, we're here. We just spawn a new enemy right at the beginning, right? But maybe I want to do something else here. So what do I want? So at the beginning, when the wave timer is finished, when we were moving the game mode to game, maybe here I want to call a function that will actually spawn a wave. So let's just, let's just call this function spawn wave, right? Something like this. Then I'm gonna create a new function in tab number one. <laughs> Man, this tab is getting really big. Maybe I should create a separate tab for it. Yeah, yeah, let's just maybe create a second separate tab for waves and enemies. Um, and we're going to start doing the stuff in here. So we don't going to get, so we don't have too many functions in one tab, uh, function spawn, not spawn n spawn n would be also maybe good to put in this tab, but I want to say spawn wave. And, and so far, it would just always just spawn a single enemy for now. And we're going to think about, you know, how we're going to spawn different enemies and so forth later on. For now, we're just going to spawn an enemy when that happens. Okay. Um, so let's see. So now the game begins. I can shoot, but uh, nothing happens now. And now when the game begins, it spawns a single enemy. And that's good. Perfect. <clears throat> okay, so now let's think about like increasing things and so forth. So um, uh, maybe when we destroy an enemy, we're gonna see if there's still enemies on the screen. And if there's no enemies left, then uh, we're gonna move on to the next wave, right? So uh, let's look about this. Uh, let's see, drawing enemies, drawing enemies, drawing enemies. No, oh, no, we're gonna go in the update function. Uh, and here where we, there we go. So here is the collision with enemy in the bullets. Uh, so far we just re respawn the enemy immediately, but we don't want to do that maybe anymore. 
uh, we're gonna see, say like if enemies, uh, if hashtag enemies, if the number of enemies is, uh, is zero, if there's no enemies on the screen anymore, then, and we're gonna create, um, we're gonna create a function called next wave. Because I don't want to to put too much code in this, I don't, I don't want to add even more code to this bloated <laughs> update function. I just want to create the next wave, and that that uh, function will take care of. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Next wave. Okay, and then um, let's create a new function called next wave. And here we're gonna go wave plus equals one. We're gonna add one to the wave and we're gonna set mode to wave text. And we're gonna set the wave time to 80, right? So we're gonna like next wave basically sets up the next wave. Uh, we're gonna increase the wave number where one, we're gonna set the text, the mode to the text and we're gonna reset the timer. And also at this point in the beginning, we can be like, in the start game function, we can now remove all of the stuff. We can say like, okay, the mode we don't actually care about, uh, the timer we also don't care about. We're gonna set the wave to zero, and then we're gonna say next wave, right? So at the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna spawn the next wave and we're gonna start at zero. So it automatically updates the wave to one and right, wave, plus equals one, so it starts at zero, but then it turns into one. We're gonna set the mode to wave text and the timer and so forth, and we're gonna set up the first wave. So like this, wave number one, wave number two, wave number three, Wave number fourth and so forth. And here at some point we can maybe add a final screen, right? So we can do something like if, ooh, wait, um, so let's do something like if wave uh, equals um, four, let's say like uh, that's gonna be the final wave or, uh, or is greater than four, then else. So if we um, def defeated four waves, if, the, if we defeated the fourth wave, then we can set the mode something to win. We won the game, right? Uh, and this is a new mode that we have to introduce now. That's where we're gonna show a screen where we won the game and, and the game is over now. And we're gonna see a you know, game over screen and a type of game over screen and a score and then congratulations, you know, stuff, stuff like that. So we're gonna call, we're gonna create a new mode. We're gonna call this win, draw, instead of draw, uh, draw over, we're gonna call this draw win. And here also, instead of over, we're gonna call this uh, update win. Just adding some modes here right now. Uh, so let us create the, the draw function for the windscreen. Like yeah, you see how, like this is now the UI kind of stuff and you can already tell like this is a lot of like a busy work, but yeah, yeah, we have to, we have to set all this stuff. I'm just gonna duplicate the draw function uh, and we're gonna call this draw win. And we're gonna, instead of game over, uh, it's gonna be all green, just, just so we're, it's just all placeholder at, at this point, but we're gonna call this, instead of game over, we're gonna say congratulations. Um, move it a little bit to the left. <laughs> Even though it's a placeholder, I'm still like fine tuning it. <laughs> uh, and then go in the update function. And we're just gonna copy the game over function. It's gonna be basically the same stuff. Uh, uh, we're gonna call this update win. I just wanna see if we can go through this entire process of actually winning the game, right? So here's wave one. Bam, wave two. Wave three. 
Oh, man, the explosion looks so good. Ah, wave four, and now we should get to the windscreen. <laughs> okay, we got to the windscreen. Hmm. Something we have to, that's something that we have to deal with. Um, um, so right now the problem that we have is if I keep the button pressed, um, it will actually trigger um, the, uh, you know, continue button, like the, it will actually trigger the go back to the start screen uh, button. So we have to kind of do a thing where we have to wait maybe for no button to be pressed. And if no button is pressed, uh, uh, only then we will allow um, to proceed from this screen. And I think the same thing, we're going to have to deal with game over. Let's just do that right away. Um, hmm. So how are we going to do this? Okay, so in the update function, um, we're going to have to check if button P, uh, button uh, 4 or 5 are not pressed. In this case, we're going to set a variable at, to like, okay, um, no buttons are being pressed at this point. And only then, if that variable has been set, only then we can proceed from that screen. So we, we're going to wait until all the button sh shooting buttons have been released. And only then we're going to actually respond to another button press. So we don't not skip over the screen automatically. So we're going to go something like if btn4 uh, is false, like equals equals false, and btn5 equals equals false, then um, but but keep trying to keep this family friendly button released uh, and I'm going to set this to true, right? So if, uh, if those buttons are not being pressed, then button release is being set to true. And then we're going to go if button released, then, then we're going to wait for a button to be pressed and that will um, allow us to proceed to the next screen. Okay, let's see if this works. I'm not sure. So with these things, sometimes you're not, not really sure. Um, is there, do I have a hand? Yeah, I have a hand. Yeah, that worked. Perfect. Um, the only thing I want to do is I want to reset the button release to false uh, when afterwards button release is equals false. So the next time I go to the, the same screen, I still have to wait until the button release is again set to true. Um, and I'm going to copy this thing and I'm going to put the same thing here and update over. Right. So, so um, we have the, basically the same code in update win and update over function, which, I mean, I guess we could just basically use the same f function, update function for those both um, uh, states or uh, modes. Mm, but we're just going to keep them separate for now because maybe some things will be different between game over and um, and winning the game. Uh, for now, I also wanted to reuse the code maybe for the start game as well. Um, uh, so for the start function, but we have to rewrite this a little bit uh, for the start update function. There we go. So here in the start update function, when we uh, when the button is pressed, uh, we just want to call the start game function and just uh, I just like paste it in, in here. Otherwise, the rest of the code is the, basically the same. Uh, still using this button released uh, variable. Okay, so these got a bit more complicated, but now there's no danger of kind of like skipping over all the screens. You have to wait for the button to get released. Perfect. And now holding the button doesn't help. I have to release it until I can begin again. Perfect. Good. So let us see. 
game flow. It's, we kind of like already addressed the game flow a little bit. Um, I am going to keep the keep this around. We still haven't um, clarified a lot of things. Um, I want to maybe clean up some of the screens that we had. The screens are placeholders still. And there's maybe some other things about the game flow that we have to think about. I'm going to keep this around. Let's just let's just call this for now. Maybe we're going to re rename this um, uh, nicer screens. Uh, and um, maybe let's split this apart and then wave logic. Uh, because we are want to create multiple enemies, but you know, the different waves maybe have some, you know, we need to maybe think about where to spawn the enemies and how many and so forth. And this, so this is something I call wave logic and then uh, nicer screens for now. And that's something I want to do until the end of this episode. I want to get into music and we haven't talked about music a lot. Now, here's a disclaimer. I am not a musician. I am actually very bad at music. <laughs> it's the one thing that I can't do. <laughs> And, but I said, you know, this is not going to be one of those, you know, and then draw the rest of the owl kind of things. I want you to at least show you me struggling with, with making music as you, some of you out there might also as well. I will walk you through some of the basics of the music system. And also I will definitely show you how to trigger music with, a, with code. But I will also add, you know, that, uh, you know, at the end of this episode, I'm going to ask my uh, friend Sebastian, he will create music for me. I'm going to paste this music in here and uh, I will show you the results at the end of the episode and you can actually use his music as well. And we're going to use his music and you're going to see how his music works because his music works probably better than whatever I create here. But I will still show you what, what's happening here. Right, so we, let's go to the... Um, let's just go create a music, like something. Just hear something, right? Uh, I'm going to go to the... Um, to this sound effect uh, thing. And so here so far are the sound effects, right? And I'm gonna go to the sound effect number 20. Uh, and let's, let's just say here's where our music begins. I just want those things to get a bit separate from each other. Now, again, uh, you can draw something here. <laughs> that's beautiful, that's, that's your music right here. Um, and again, the speed setting kind of like differentiates sound effects from music. If something is really fast, if we right click here on this on a speed setting, then it's just some basic sound effect. But if we play it slower, if we click on this and the speed number gets bigger, which means that the delay between the different notes gets bigger, so, and then you can actually hear you can hear mm, beautiful music. Yes, it's it's beautiful. Um, something that helps uh, if you are inept like I am uh, is if you hold down control, I think, if you hold down control and start drawing something, then um, the notes that, that it will create will actually snap to a so-called pentatonic scale and that seems nicer. Okay. That's, it, it does seem nice. I'm gonna... Uh, I'm gonna, like... I don't know if that's music, but I just, I'm just gonna have some fun here. Maybe a different music instruments, as I, as I said, with shift and music instrument, you can change everything to this different music instrument. Okay, so let's say this is some, something I want to play in the start screen, right? Okay, uh, let us turn this into a music. Uh, and that's something that we can do here in this note, right? So we have patterns here. And you, as you can see, there's like four columns. And each of the columns you can load in the sound effect. So you can load in the sound effects that we had, but that's not what we want. We want to load in our music track. So here is. And so this pattern, this first, the zero zero pattern now has one of the channels. These are four channels. One of the channels is now filled with this, with the sound effect number 20. 
Now you can play, you can fill in different sound. Oh, well, you can actually <laughs> duplicate this as well. I never tried it. How, how does that even work? Does that even get, work? Yeah, it does work. It just duplicates. Um, but yeah, you can load in different sound effects in the different channels and up to four at the same time are being played at the same time and that's called a pattern. Um, so let us just like, let us do some kind of like, I don't know, let's just uh, do some kind of rhythm. I don't know if that's even the right, like, well, you can switch this um, music mode, right? You can switch this into this version. Uh, this is kind of like the drawing music version, and this is kind of like the I am a real musician version. <laughs> and here you can kind of like copy and paste like text, uh, the different notes. And here you can, I think, feel like you have a more better control over the, the rhythm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So this is kind of like basically the note and the different numbers are like, this is the, this is the a, a, a hashtag. <laughs> I'm not a musician. Um, so this is a note. Hey, Christian from the future here. So Christian from the past is a little bit out of depth here. So I had to like look, look things up and uh, refresh my memory about this. This is actually a very powerful interface and um, requires some explanations here. So let's just go through the numbers on each um, each each note here. So the first uh, number is the note, uh, or the first entry here, that's the note that is being played. Uh, the second entry here, that is the octave of the note that is being played. Uh, the third number, the pink number, uh, that is the instrument that is being played, which corresponds to these buttons here up here. And you can uh, see in the bottom left corner, the number that is associated with each, um, with each instrument. So this number here, that five means that we're playing this instrument that's called an organ. Uh, and then the blue uh, number that corresponds to the volume of the note that is being played. And you can see the volumes here, uh, basically, you know, the highest volume is seven and the lowest volume is a zero. Now there's this last entry here and, and for every note that corresponds to these different like um, effects that are, can be applied to each note. But that's something that Christian from the uh, past will explain uh, uh, in a second. Uh, for now, I just wanted to um, like maybe clarify what the buttons do because when you press buttons, nothing happens, right? You cannot really, like it seems like nothing nothing does anything. Um, there are, the buttons here are basically just, you know, switches, toggles for you to be able then to play uh, notes on your keyboard. So the way in th this works in this mode is that uh, your, your keyboard, your computer keyboard basically becomes a piano keyboard. And I'm going to display here a little um, cheat sheet from our Pico H cheat sheet that shows you how the different um, uh, keys on your keyboard are mapped to kind of like a piano keyboard. And then you can use those keys to play the notes in here. And the notes that will be added are will be played, you know, with this instrument, with this uh, uh, special effect, with this volume, at this volume and, and then this octave, right? So it's like, uh, let me start playing. <laughs> And then I'm going to change the sound effect to this, the instrument to this. And then maybe this. Right? So if you are musically inclined, you can use the keyboard to kind of like really play the melody on your uh, computer keyboard. But let us discuss maybe uh, the sound effects here, these, these effects here, because these are special and I think these are incredibly powerful. I think this one, uh, the last one is like a, a, a special effect. Yeah, special effect you can add. That's something that you cannot do in this mode. That's something that's exclusive to this mode. So if you put a number in the, f in the final column, you can see that the different effects are being applied to that note and different effects are here. Zero, no effect. One is a slide. So basically two notes are sliding into each other. A vibrato is basically uh, the sound effect is like kind of like vibrating. <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> I know you have to be a musician for this. Drop means that the sound effect starts at the, the position and it goes lower suddenly like pew, it's, it's kind of good for, for bass. So I'm going to try this. Um, so this is going to be sound effect number three, right? Yeah, see? You can add a really nice like, 
kick drum. It starts at the um, at the note or, or at the uh, yeah the note that you want to play, but then kind of like like goes goes down in the in the uh, pitch of the note. It goes down, so it kind of feels like a kick drum, and you can fade in and fade now out individual notes. You can do an arpeggio, uh, slow and fast. There's there's a lot you can do. So let's do arpeggio. That's really kind of fun. I think that works when you have more notes happening next to each other. Yeah, but for now let's let's do this this kick drum. Um, let's make sure the kick drum is the same speed. So we have kind of like the melody that's in our sound number twenty, and then we have kind of like the rhythm or the kick drum on a sound uh, number twenty one. And so now I can set twenty one in the second channel. And now the pattern uh, number zero sounds like this. <laughs> this is such a nonsense. Uh, such a nonsense me melody. I love it. Nonsense indeed. Uh, here's Christian from the future real quick. Uh, I wanted to add a very important detail that uh, Christian from the past forgot to mention here. So we've been talking about the four different channels that you have in each pattern where you can load in different sound effects. And right now we used two of the channels and there's two channels free. Um, it's very important to realize that, you know, Pico 8 can only play four sound effects at any given time. So we used, um, so it has four channels and when the channels are full, it, you know, you, you cannot basically play any more sound effects at the same time. Uh, so when you are making music, um, it's a good idea, especially when it's music that's supposed to play during gameplay, uh, it makes sense to at least leave one channel free uh, for uh, the sound effects to play. Because otherwise what happens is when you have music that uses all four channels, and then you play a sound effect, then what happens is usually one of the uh, um, channels of the music gets dropped randomly, like you just don't hear one of the channels of the music anymore suddenly, and that can uh, make the sound music really funky. So a big part of creating a composition for the game uh, is going to be kind of like managing the channels, making sure that, you know, some channels maybe are reserved for the music and some channels are reserved for the sound effects. But that's something that, that we're going to maybe realize later down the line when you actually bring everything together and you can see you can hear how everything uh, sounds when it's you know when it's all combined uh and let's go back to this and so now that we have this maybe we can i don't know can we can we just copy and paste stuff around here let's just like let's just let's just like uh maybe maybe how does that i i want to do something that is kind of like a little bit more in rhythm with the rhythm if you know what I'm saying. So maybe, maybe this gets deleted. Hmm. That doesn't sound right. Oh yeah, I, I want to also show you this. So when you are in the in the music um, uh, editor, uh, then up here you can switch to different like different displays, and so this just shows you different patterns. Uh, but this kind of like shows you an overview of all of the patterns that are available. There are sixty-four patterns available, and you can see we're just using pattern zero here. But you can like you know select different patterns here, and here is even like a, it gets where it gets really crazy. Here's the switch, but you can switch to the sound effects, and here is actually you can see the different sound effects. You can see the, our sound sounds. You can double click to play them. So you can also see that we only have 64 sound effects for this entire game. So we are a bit, a bit limited here. Uh, but yeah, uh, in this music editor, you can, there's a different, really a lot of different uh, viewing modes to see the different, different patterns. Uh, something else I wanted to show you, you can create multiple patterns. And the whole idea of the music is that let's um, let's just uh, continue, for example, just with the bass without the uh, without the melody, something like this. Pattern number one is now just the bass, and there's no melody now. 
So if you run this, you can see the music automatically continues throughout the patterns, right? So you get, if you play music and um, the music at, at pattern number zero, when that pattern is finished, it will automatically jump to the next pattern, which is pattern number one. So that's how you can create longer compositions. You can just like, you will have to set up multiple patterns after each other and the music will continue playing, jumping to the next pattern once one pattern is finished. Um, if you want to set up looping, if you want to just at some point say, okay, now just repeat those couple of patterns over and over again, you can do this with these buttons here. So this is the beginning of a loop and then this is the end of a loop. And so when a pattern finishes that is set to now this is the end of the loop, then basically this entire tape will rewind until it finds a tape, uh, it finds a pattern that has this is the beginning of the loop uh, button clicked on it. And there is, you can also set a, some, that some patterns are just set to stop, which means like once this pattern is being played, the music is over and now we stop playing. I'm going to show you this. I, I don't know if this, this will work, but I think it will work. Now it repeats the two patterns, like it goes from zero to one and then back to zero. Right, it loops between those two patterns uh, because pattern number one is kind of like the end of the loop and pattern number zero is the beginning of the loop. So it just jumps between those two. If I wanted to have like a longer pattern, then I would turn off the loop, end of the loop here at pattern number one and I would maybe set it to, you know, here. And then uh, that's not pattern number four. And then, you know, it will loop one, uh, zero, one, two, three, four. And at the end of the four, it will return to zero. Uh, or alternatively, maybe I want it just to stop. Stop at pattern number one. I can do that. That's it. Okay. Um, but yeah, let's just try to play this music because I think there's something that a lot of people are struggling with. I'm gonna to go to the init function and um, the command to play music is really easy, just music and the number of the pattern. So, so music zero, that is just plain pattern number zero. That's it. Now the music is automatically looping because we set up the looping here in the pattern editor. Now, here's something that is very important. And that's something that I see a lot of people struggle with. We put this music command in the init function, in the init function, because that's where we want the music to start at the beginning of the, of this program. Something that I see a lot is that people will set the music um, command in the update function somewhere. For example, here. Right? That's that doesn't sound right. So okay, maybe maybe not in the big update function, but maybe here, like in the. Uh, let's go. Let's go. Let's put it in update start. That's the start screen, right? I want to maybe play this this music in the start. Um, uh, mode at in the start screen. Let's just put it in update start. What is happening? Well, again, reminded to one of the first uh, first episodes, the update function is being spammed. Remember, the update functions and draw functions are being spammed and being called thirty times per, uh, thirty times per second. Yeah. So what's happening is we are restarting the music 30 times per second. That's why it sounds so weird. That's just us restarting the music all over and over, just mashing the play button basically over and over again. And that's not how this works. You start the music once and then music plays all on its own. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to re keep the music playing an update function or something. So that's why it's very important that when you start some music and that you start the music once 
And don't put it in update function, put it somewhere where something is being started once, maybe you know, like a button press command or something, right? So in our case, for example, I mean, it would be a good idea, for example, here in the start mode to add some like music zero for, you know, this is now the start screen music, right? And then in the update functions, for example, when we return from the over, from the game over, uh, when we return to the start screen mode equals start, then we start the uh, start screen music. And then here, when we return from the win screen, we also start the start screen music, right? So let's just run this. Okay, then start the game. Oh no, the music is still playing. Because maybe this music was the start screen music, right? So that's that's not good. How do we stop the music from playing? Um, well, there's a commander for that as well. Uh, let's go to the update function. Uh, let's go to the update start. This is the, the update function for the start screen. Uh, when we start the game, um, yeah, let's, no, I don't know. But yeah, we're just gonna go music minus one, minus one. There is no pattern minus one. That will basically just stop the music. Bam. <laughs> now that is a bit of sudden. It would be kind of nice if we could maybe fade out the music a little bit. And we can do that as well. So here in uh, the music uh, uh, music function, there's a second command that you can give and we can set it like 3000. And that is the number of milliseconds it will um, fade the music out in. So if we set the music to minus one, so no music please, and then 3000, that means for three seconds, it will fade out the music. So let's just see how that sounds. You can see that the music is slowly being faded out. Mm, let's just maybe, that was a bit slow. I'll just fade it out quick, more quickly. Let's go a thousand. So you can see the music was from faded out. And I think the same way, if you run a different type of music, let's, let's just run pattern number one. I think it will crossfade. Let's see how that works. Mm, I don't know if that sounded like crossfading. Um, I, I think that's something that we have to experiment with. But yeah, as you can see, I'm not a big musician and I I can't tell you all of the cool tricks and, and, and all of the things out and how to do this thing, how to operate this, this uh, huge, huge screen. So this is the moment where I will probably uh, point you in the direction of the beautiful Gruber music channel. That's right, the Gruber music channel. Gruber music is a, a very famous Pico 8 musician kind of person and, and he is he has a YouTube channel with a lot of beautiful tutorials and uh, its own Patreon and so forth. Uh, he's definitely the kind of person that you need to talk to if you want to learn how to make music in Pico 8. Watching him make music is really, really inspiring and, and really fun. Uh, and I think he's the kind of person that will teach you um, you know, the ins and outs, especially if you're already somebody who already knows how to make music. And I think generally uh, Pico 8 is a really good tool to get into uh, chip tunes. I think this is a very nice and comfortable little environment to get, uh, you know, ex experiment a little bit with this. Anyways, I uh, actually reached out to a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Sebastian, Sebastian Hustler. I've been working with him a lot on different, my different games and he is also a musician. He also likes to make music in, in, uh, in Pico 8. And I asked him to create a bunch of compositions for, for our game. And he did that. And you can also now copy them over to your program if you want to use his music. Uh, but you are also free to use your own music. I'm just going to walk you through the different pieces that he prepared. So you have an idea of what kind of music we have that we're going to use in our game. Okay. All right, I copied the music over, so let me let me walk you through the music that we now have in our game. Um, so let us start here. Let us just like go through the different. So first, we have a pattern number zero. Sounds like this now. So this is kind of like maybe like a success sound effect if something good happened. Um, this or like a jingle, so success jingle. This is the kind of like the start music. Uh, 
Um, so these are two patterns after each other. Um, this could be maybe the music in the start screen or maybe the music when you begin a new game. I'm not really sure. Um, then um, this is basic. This is basically a remix or like a remake of the theme of Galaga, and he actually he that's he hit it pretty well, I think. Um, this is pattern number three. That sounds like this. Um, so I thought maybe this could be like a jingle when you finish a level or something. And this. So patterns four and five uh, is a jingle basically, I think this is a jingle uh, when you beat the entire game. Then you will hear this jingle and you will see your score. And then pattern number six sounds like this. Well, that's going to be the game over jingle. Ta-da! That's it. Uh, I will show you now the different sound effects that we have just created. So the last sound effect we previously had was this. It was basically the getting hit sound effect. And now come the sound effect that uh, my friend Sebastian has created. And basically the idea is that you're gonna have to, I mean, either you download the um, the code of the game from the end of the this episode, or you just just copy, you know, use the you see the numbers on the screen, you just copy the numbers from the screen and put it in your in, into your program. Uh, you, really, just numbers are the important thing. None of the buttons, um, or maybe the 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 the, uh, the sliders down here, but otherwise, really, just the numbers here in the notes are important, and of course, the speed. So this is um, all these sound effects are part of the music, some one way or or the other. So this sounds like this. This is uh, sound effect number four. Sound effect number five sounds like this. Sound effect number six sounds like this. Okay, so and then the, you, you basically the first pattern is all these three sound effects are being laid on top of each other. Uh, now. So this is the melody from the Galaga soundtrack. I'm going to set it to this mode so we can see it uh, play, being played out. This is number seven. This is number eight. This is number nine. This is number 10. This number 11, 12. This thing has a um, this this switch being switched off. These are fairly new features in Pico 8. Basically, you can tweak the entire sound by activating or deactivating certain sound effects. It's kind of like a filter being put on top of uh, um, the entire sound effect. 13. 14, 15, 16. This has never some really nice, I think it's, is it vibrato? Yeah, it is vibrato. So you can look like the sound effect wobbles a little bit. Really nice uh, uh, effect. And this is basically the same repeated, but with a filter on top, it's really cool. And that's it. That's all of the sound effects that we have. 17 sound effects in total now. Uh, so we got, uh, we used a whole bunch of sound effects for this music, but you know, we got some really good, um, nice music in return. And now just to walk you through the different patterns. So pattern number one uses sound effects seven and eight. Uh, question from the future here. I forgot to mention uh, that there's also a pattern zero and that uses the, um, the sound effects four, five, and six. Pattern number two uses nine and 10. Pattern number three uses 11, 12, and 13. Pattern number four uses 14 and eight. Pattern number five uses 15 and 10. Uh, 16 and 17 for pattern number six. And that's it. Uh, I also set some pauses like for the, you know, uh, for example, for pattern number six, that's the game over sound. 
I set the stop flag here so when you play this music it will just play the sound effect once and won't loop the music or do anything like this. Uh, so yeah, that's something I set for five, uh, six, five, three, two, and one. I guess I one should also be set. No, no, not one. Zero. There we go. Zero is set as well. Because zero sounds like this. Okay. Good. I know this is annoying copying these things over, so I would maybe suggest just downloading the file. I will maybe post it down in doobly-doo. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Yeah, copying the stuff is kind of like annoying. Something you can do sometimes, and that's how I copied this over. Uh, if you uh, switch this mode, uh, where you can select to the different patterns, you can copy here and can open two versions of PQ8. You can copy uh, from one version and then go to the other version and paste it in. Um, you can paste, copy and paste patterns and it will automatically uh, create the corresponding sound effects um, to support those patterns. Uh, just the sound effects might not end up have the same number that uh, they have in my version of the game. It's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Pico 8 is not really great about moving music around at this point. It's a bit, a bit of a tricky thing. But yeah, you know, as always, the opportunity is always there to just create your own music and might be uh, more rewarding in the end, right? Okay, so to finish the episode up, let us get the music in there. Let us, let us, um, let us put maybe the starting music at the beginning of the, uh, when, when the start uh, screen appears. <laughs> So I actually was thinking about actually creating a start screen uh, function. Let's do that real quick. So let's just go here where we start the game. We're gonna go also create a new function called function start screen, something like this. Just like a start screen function that just like puts us in the start screen. And we run this at the beginning. We're gonna call this start screen, right? And we're gonna set the mode uh, to start. And we're gonna play music number one, the music pattern number one. Okay. And we don't need any of the other things here anymore. And uh, we're gonna use the same function here and update functions. When we go to the start screen, from here, from the all game over function. Oh, or from the game over screen. And when we go from the win screen to the start screen, we can just use this start screen function and that will take care of the music and all the modes and everything. Okay. Using it for the win and the update over function. Okay. Let's just run this. It doesn't loop, so that's good. It fades the music out correctly um, because when we start a game, right? When we start a game, where do we do this? When update function, we did we did this. When we start a game, we also fade out the music. Um, you know what? I will actually do this in the start game function. So we fade up whatever music is playing. When we start the game, we fade up whatever is being played. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, and then maybe we're gonna, let's add um, the game over music. The, that's gonna be pattern number six. Let's get, the, add, get that added to the game over. Um, so let's go to the update function when we get hit. Um, here, game mode over. When lives are uh, at zero, we're gonna play music number six, right? Once, not every time, but just once. So now we're gonna get hit. One more, and one more. Perfect. Good. 
So far, so good. This was a very, very long episode. And um, yeah, we did a lot of things. We kind of like preparing our, the, the skeleton of our, of our, yeah, um, better music integration. There's some other patterns that we haven't dealt with, but we're going to do this maybe in, in, other, in other, other episode where we're going to deal more with wave logic. <clears throat> okay, good, good. So this is it for today. Now I want to move on to the doggy zone. That's right, the doggy zone. And really, I mean, you probably already seen this coming. The doggy zone is all just our going to be about you guys and experimenting with the music. I want you to create your own music. At least try to create your own music, even if you're not a musician. Even if you, if you at the end you're going to end up using my music. Maybe you don't like some of the uh, pieces that uh, Sebastian created. Just replace one of them, or just before you copy over Sebastian's music, try at least uh, creating your own music and and. And uh, yeah, just making it work a little bit, just like so as you understand the controls. I think uh, understanding, you know, how, of the, how all the filters work actually helps you later on maybe creating the sound effects as well. So yeah, uh, give it a try with music and try to create your own music. And yes, otherwise the task from the last episode still persists. If you haven't created your own enemies, additional enemies, you know, alternative enemies yet, then you definitely should get prepared. Uh, you should have, uh, I said, four enemies should be down here in your sprite sheet animated. This is something that we're going to deal with on the next episode. And yes, this is the moment where I will also say a big, big, big thank you to all of the people on Coffee who support this endeavor. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard right. So we are preparing this wave logic thing and I think it's kind of like it's becoming important to actually tackle this problem of spawning multiple enemies, of having multiple enemies on the screen, of uh, animate maybe uh, animating multiple enemies and but also, you know, moving multiple enemies, making them move maybe differently. That's something that comes up uh, in the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye bye.